So step two is coming up and you really need to know how to study for this exam because you want to get the best possible score that you can in order to get to the residency of your choosing. If that's you and you've clicked on this video, you're home. You're in the right place because in this video, we're going to be talking about all the tools, all the sources and any tips that I may have to give to you so you can get the best possible score that you can on your exam. Before we get started, my name is Gore. I'm a fourth year medical student that's currently applying for residencies. To be honest, I wanted to make this video for a while now, so I'm happy to be publicly posting on YouTube for the first time. We're gonna gatekeep absolutely nothing in this video. I'm gonna make sure that you have all the sources that you need to get that good score. Speaking of gatekeeping, I'm not gonna gatekeep my score either. This is how I performed on my exam. So that was my score. And I'm very proud of my score because I really did work hard in order to get it. And I really want you guys to also get the best score that you can. To be honest, medicine is very competitive. I remember when the scores for uh, step two used to be around a 230 and throughout the years they've climbed to uh, 250 today and 250 is a great score it's a very hard score to achieve there's a lot of sources online that may help you get that score but you really need to know the most efficient way if you found this video really reference it for yourself and share it to your friends send it, send it to any friends you might have in med school uh, people that might be getting into med school spread the word and really help each other out let's get the best scores that we can so we can make a seamless uh, transition from medical school to residency so with that out of the way let's get started with our first source our first source is uworld um everybody knows uworld you can talk to a five-year-old that knows nothing about medicine and somehow they'll know uworld for a good reason it's considered the gold standard of question banks and i truly think that it is the way that the explanations are given after you get questions correct or incorrect is fantastic. I believe that there should be a system in how you do your world. So I did one full pass of your world and the way I did it was throughout my clerkships. So any clerkship rotation I was on, I would find the respective section on the shelf section on your world and I would do those questions. So for example, if I was doing a OBGYN that month, I would find the OBGYN section, exhaust all the questions and gain that knowledge that I would carry with me to the actual step two exam. Now, if you're fearful that you might forget the knowledge that you gained in a month of doing a certain clerkship, I was too. And what I did is I created separate Google Docs for each section that I would complete. So if I was on, again, OBGYN, I created a separate Google Doc for OBGYN. And I, in that doc, I wrote um, the, the things I didn't know. If I learned something new, I wrote it. If uh, something was confusing to me or something very interesting, I wrote it down. I continued this throughout the year until my last clerkship, which was, I believe, surgery. And I had a, a nice list of Google Docs that I could always go back to throughout the year to see any information that might have been a new revelation to me or something that I found cool and wanted to look back on. So I know some people like to do this with Anki cards. And if you're an Anki person, you could also do that. You don't have to do a doc. I've just never used Anki. I honestly don't know how it works. I'll talk to you about my perspective on Anki a little later throughout this video, but just have a place where you can reference it back. By the way, after the first pass of UWorld, uh, I thought that was sufficient because I tried to do another pass and I maybe got around 20% done. And I saw that for myself personally, I was remembering the questions. And this was a problem to me because I wanted to learn new things and not uh, recall old stuff that I already knew. Never really did it again after 20% because I started doing AMBOSS. Now AMBOSS I did throughout the year as well, but I really started to focus on it more near the end. And I wish I did it earlier because I think the test writers have probably caught on that most people know UWorld. People know UWorld questions very well. So AMBOSS is a little bit different in the way they ask questions. Their explanations are very pristine very clear cut think that if you want to add more questions to your repertoire that it's great to do amboss also amboss has this thing called 200 questions that appear on every step two exam if you're not going to do amboss i highly recommend that you just do that because that 200 question thing i think on my actual step two exam maybe about 10 to 15 of those questions appear now they weren't the same exact question but they were very similar and similar concepts were tested so 
Uh, please do Amboss. Do not sleep on Amboss. It's like the little brother of UWorld, but that just doesn't get the attention it needs. So give it the attention that it needs. It's really going to help you out. The next source I want to talk about, mostly three altogether, and it's the final source of questions that you'll be doing when you're studying. So it's your CMS forms, which stands for Clinical Mastery Series forms. It's your NBME exams and free 120 exams. Starting with the CMS forms, I did these throughout my clerkships, just like I did UWorld. You can find different CMS exams on the NBME website, or maybe you could find it. Everything is on Reddit, so maybe you could find it on Reddit. You could go through those CMS forms for every clerkship. And I did it for peds, ops, gyne, surgery, internal. I just completed all of them and I never did it again. I thought one pass of those was sufficient. For my MBMEs, I did MBMEs 8 to 15. I think 15 is the last one. So I did all those MBMEs about two to three weeks before my actual test date. I would do 200 questions in one day and I'd take the rest of the day off because that really kicked my butt. And the next day I would sit down and review all 200. And if I found anything new, again, I go to the Google Docs and just write it there. I, I did, you know, a, a full MBME with review in two days. And I did that for until the end of the MBMEs. And those are super representative of the exam. So I recommend that you keep those towards the end. It's a tool that you'll need and you don't want to forget these questions because they're super useful. Free 120s are also very good. I think there's about two to three free 120s that you can access now. And I did those about three to four weeks before my exam. I kind of threw them in sometimes when I got bored of doing other things just to switch it up. And I think these questions were also representative and they were a really good reflection of the exam. So make sure you do those uh, free 120s with the MBMEs about three to four weeks before your exam. The next source I want to talk about is Melman Medical. Melman Medical is a fantastic source in terms of the videos that he puts out and the online PDFs that he has. He's great. And I will link his YouTube channel and his uh, website below. And the way that I used Melman was primarily during step one, but I also used them during step two. The YouTube videos were really helpful when I was doing my separate clerkships and rotations, because if there was something I wouldn't really understand, I would watch Melman. I'm not too good at surgery, for example. And anytime that I thought that I was having shortcomings, I just on YouTube, I just write Melman Medical uh, Surgery and I'd watch all his videos. I'd listen to his explanations. Uh, about why an answer is correct or incorrect. This really helped me be better with answering questions. I think his PDFs were also a fantastic source. And if you have any gaps in your knowledge, you could really hone it there. By the way, speaking of step one, uh, if you do need some help with step one, if you want some advice on how to pass it, please comment down below and I will make a future video and we can address that animal when we have the chance. The next source I wanna talk about is a very important one. And if you've clicked on this video and you got to this point, this might be one of the most important things I'm saying, because there's this thing called quality improvement and patient safety, along with ethics and biostatistics that is so heavily tested on the step two exams that people kind of undermine how important it actually is, especially this new quality improvement and patient safety. There's not too many questions on it online. If you're doing a UWorld or AMBOSS question bank, you're not going to get everything that you need out of it. Well, in order to combat that, I've made my own Google Doc that I've referenced throughout the year, and I'm going to share it. I'm going to link it down below so you can access the Google Doc, share it with your friends. It's around 40 something pages, and it'll tell you everything that you need to know about quality improvement, patient safety, ethics, and biostats. Those are all going to come up. And I think, honestly, I'm not even lying. 20 to 25% of my exam was just that. It wasn't even the things you learn in clerkships. It was just how to approach medicine, how to approach safety and improvement. So please look at that. It's very important. Another tool for biostatistics specifically is Dr. Randy Neal. Dr. Randy Neal makes you feel less, uh, less stressful about this exam. He has very good videos on test confidence and his biostats section is supreme. And I will link his channel down below. If my biostats section on the docs doesn't really cover everything that you want or you want to see it in video format. Please check out, check out Dr. Randy Neal. So about books, what book do you use to study for this exam, right? For step one, we had first aid book and that book was chef's kiss it's an amazing book i still reference it now i reference that book during my step two exam even though it's a step one book but now what book do you use 
the, st the step two first aid is not as polished. So I went on a hunt to find the next best book. I found this thing called Step Up to Medicine. I didn't really click with it. And after days and days of trying to find the best possible book, I found it. I found it. I'll, I'll actually I'll pop a little picture right here and I'll link it down below. I'll link an Amazon link where you can buy this book. The explanations are very, very advanced, yet easy at the same time. And it's fun to read this book. The algorithms are placed very beautifully. The sections and the chapters are divided very well where you can uh, follow it based on your clerkships. You could, you could read it whenever you want. I would say maybe about 10% of my exam I couldn't credit to this book. It's called the themes book for step two and step three, but I don't really know how much of it is actually step three. I found that it was a great book for step two, but if you do learn stuff that's step three, even better, you can carry that with you throughout the years and gain some more knowledge. Why not? Please read it. I read it about two to three times and I wish I read it more, not just for the fact that I needed it for the exam, just because it was fun to read. The next source I want to talk about is Divine Intervention. Now, I've never actually listened to the audios of Divine Intervention because I'm more of a visual learner. So I found uh, a YouTube channel and the YouTuber's name was Alex Su. Uh, props to you, Alex. You really helped me with my step two exam. And in this video, he talked about how to study for your step two as well. He mentioned that there's a Google Doc on all the high yield divine intervention that you can see. The Google Doc is about 400 to 500 pages, I believe. And it has a lot of important stuff on there that you can review before your exam. So I would recommend that you look at this about two weeks before your exam, maybe do like 20 to 50 pages a day it covers everything, internal medicine, ethics, biostat, it really does cover everything. So do check that out and I'll link um, Alex's video down below so you can go and find that divine intervention link and check that out, read the doc, I think it's really good. I wanna talk a little bit about Anki and I wanna give some final minute tips before I let you go and study. Anki, my stance on Anki is that I feel that it really stresses just memorization in a way. And I found that this exam really likes to eliminate people that just memorize. If you are just memorizing information, it, the test will honestly be very difficult because they really love testing concepts as opposed to rote memorization. Monkey, I find that it's a great tool in order to go back to certain things that you want to remember, but you can very easily fall into the trap of just memorizing things just to memorize it. They thought I would be a victim of this, so I was scared to even start Anki. I just, I just avoided it. That's my take on it. If you've been using Anki, go for it, of course, it's your thing. But if you haven't used Anki and you're considering if you should, or if you think it's just not your thing, don't even do it. I don't even think it's necessary. The last thing, some final tips that I want to give to you all taking this exam. Guys, at the end of the day, it's just an exam. It's just a formality that you need in order to get to residency. You have to complete it. And by the way, the, after you take this exam, regardless of how good or bad you do, you're going to forget about it so quick. After I got my score, I was hyped for like two days. I was, I was so excited. Then at the next week after, I'm like, okay, it was just an exam on to the next step of life. I got more rotations to do. I want to learn more. I want to get to a good residency. What else can I add to my repertoire? Try not to stress about it. If you see others stressing, don't let it get to you. If anything, try to de-stress them. Try to uh, share this video so they can de-stress. Don't miss out on the things you love doing. If you love exercising, having certain hobbies like playing an instrument, going on walks, whatever it is, the things that you love doing, still do it. Just as important as it is to study for this exam, the rest is also that much important. Get good sleep, go see your friends, go see your family, see your partners, spend time with your children, do the things that you like to do and enjoy it. It's just an exam and I know you guys will be great. I'm really hoping all the sources that we talked about could really help you get that good score that you want. And if there's any other questions that you have, please uh, comment it down below. I'll read all your comments and I'll get back to you. And, and again, if you want a step one video on how to pass that, comment i'll make that video so good luck on your exam guys you guys are gonna absolutely crush it and yeah enjoy your day